call the meeting to order at 506 of the Waitley School Committee meeting. This meeting is recorded. Um, if you are recording the meeting, you need to ask for permission. So if anybody's out there recording, you can do so at this time. Yeah, I didn't think so. All right, so moving on, the first order of business is reorganization. And so I will take nominations for chair. Bob Bella, if you would like to have it. <laughs> All right, second. Got a first and Thanks, second. Bob. Any other nominations? Seeing none, close nominations. All those in favor of Bob Holla for chair. All right, 3 0. I so, was going to late. Can you do it? <laughs> so I think you had enough on your plate. Yes, I know. That's that's why. Bob is serious. Okay. Um, so you're going to do. Do I have a sheet? Uh, probably not. So go ahead and do vice chair. Okay. Uh, I need a vice chair a nomination for vice or do I appoint? Uh, nominations for the. <clears throat> Position. For vice chair, vice chair, then you're going to do the position. Right. I nominate Beth for vice chair. Second. All in favor? And I make a nomination, Henry, to be our mm -hmm. secretary. You don't have to do anything unless, well, unless you want to take over. If you're good with taking minutes and stuff like that, you could be our secretary. Right now, we have in house secretaries that take over the minutes for our, our meetings well i think you technically still have to vote him as secretary okay i'm chair. just telling him he doesn't well, have to take the title minutes. but he doesn't have to take the exactly rest. oh title with no responsibility so i'll make a nomination for henry to be our secretary second all in favor can i vote for this one? yeah yeah, right. yeah sure <laughs> All right, so you're going to need, I have to go off memory here, um, frontier negotiation. You need a frontier rep. I'd be happy to do the frontier rep again if you want. Sure. sure. That's just a nominate. That's just um, appointed. Um, I I think it's elected, so go ahead and elect. Um, it says yeah. appointed. Okay, that's it's appointed. Bob Hall okay. been appointed. Okay. Oh, you have the template? Okay. Good. Oh, good. It's in the notes. And then we sh and then we have like uh, we've got them. Okay. What's next on the list, please? Negotiation team. Oh no, Union Thirty Eight voting members three, and so it's the three of yeah. you. Um, negotiations team. It's a non. I'm on it. It's a non year, but it could stuff could come. You're already on. I'm on it at Frontier. Oh. Can you represent both? I. I What's that? Represent both, or did we have? But you don't know what you're on at Frontier because right. you're organizing at right. So, so uh, now, um, either one of you want to be on negotiations? We yes, don't here. have to do it. We don't, like to we're be not going to do side of negotiations. Well, I'd be happy to do it. Oh, okay. I mean, it's not a year that we're going to be negotiating. <laughs> the anyway. chance of having something is slim, but if yeah, something does okay. come up, where we have to discuss okay. the contract. Capital and quite frankly, you could, if at that time you don't have the time, you could be points. Okay. Okay. I mean, like, yeah. Capital improvement. I'd like to do that. If that's okay right, and yeah. then that would that may require going to the yeah. to the select board meeting where they're talking about um, capital improvement stuff. Yeah. 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 Where are these position descriptions listed? Are they in of these? Yeah, the responsibilities, or is this something that's not? I don't think it's this in the thing. That might be something to add. To that, not to give us like a policy or something. I'm just wondering or? if there's a document that I didn't see no. where these appointments. Okay, no, no, okay, no, we all read it. <laughs> you're, you're, don't do that to me. <laughs> What's next? Um, uh, representative to the collaborative. Yeah, I got an email on that since, um, want to go to the collaborative? Sure, well, Maureen actually said it's a great place to learn about school. Plus, kids. they yeah, feed you fun. too. I think I, I do a lot of stuff them as a teacher in the high school. So. Oh yeah, I mean, policy review committee. There is work this year in policy review committee, so this will be a few meetings, especially probably starting in October. In the after afternoons, more likely, or when we'll find or, out when people can meet. Um, but we have a, we have a slew of policies to go through, so there is quite a bit of policy review. I I can do it. At, I can. I've done it before. I could do it again, but if it, it, does it matter if I'm on the frontier board and we're talking about the same policies there? If I'm on the board, if I'm on a policy committee there, 
Well, or should I worry about this here? It's the same. It's the same policies. We try to keep them consistent. Right. So if you become the policy committee person here, then just ask someone else to take the appointment in Frontier. I'll I'll take the policy here. Thank you. Because I know you both have full time jobs, so appreciate it. Now, two people for the sick leave bank. What is that? Is sick now? leave bank. If a um, teacher runs out of sick leave and wishes um, to access additional leave from other teachers um, time. So we have a, a sick leave bank. Our bank doesn't feed into, there's no, there's no money in the bank, but as need comes up, teachers donate to a bank, but we make the decision to allow that to happen, go through a two person committee from the committee and two person committee from the union. So the four people get together and discuss the situation. And it happens, it happens sometimes never, and sometimes it happens a couple times a year. Depends on what it depends on what the needs are. Email. It has. Have they met in person in there, lately? I mean, they met last year. I don't remember how they did it. I'm not. I don't sit in unless I'm asked to sit in. But did you do that? I I I did. I think I was Maureen. the one last year with Maureen, maybe or something. I mean, I'll I'll be one of them too. I, I can do that as well. Mm -hmm. And so my understanding though is that it's it's the two sets of two coming together to negotiate. The request for correct. access to the bank. Correct. And so and so you and we do that because you don't want bad you don't want teachers having to make decisions to no, whom totally you know right. what I mean? Like, yeah. you know, you know, based on non-merit kind mm -hmm. of you know, mm -hmm. it, it removes them from the, the situation yeah, that unless totally. other people make the decision if yeah. they should qualify and they're not abusing the sick leave bank and that kind of stuff. And there's and there's two different banks. There's one for teachers and there's one for IAs. Yeah. They don't no, I, think that's that's yeah. I just wanted to make yeah. sure it was the I was understanding it correctly. I heard. Is it, it the chat? Yeah, that's what I heard. It was virtual last year. So, and also for you to know, Vicky and Lisa are our UN38 presidents. So they have these so I don't know if they can see any. Hi. <laughs> Hello. Um, the last one is the superintendency agreement. I need some on that. Bob's currently on it. Yeah. Yeah, stay on it because we're going to yeah. wrap this thing up. I don't want to restart. Yeah, I, I screwed you guys over the other day, so I apologize. No, no, no that's fine. Things happen. Yeah. Approve the minutes from the last. All right. All right. You ready? For, yep. Go ahead. Okay, let's review and approve the minutes from June 8th of this past June. He can, you can, he can I vote too. Move. He can vote as he believes them to, if he believes them to be correct. I'll move to approve the minutes. I'll second. Okay. All in favor? Uh, Shelly's first uh, financial statement. Yay. Welcome back. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I did send you out the expense reports. I have a couple of comments on them, but to get the warrants on the record. So there were a significant amount of warrants for lately signed between uh, the last meeting in June and now because we still pay bills over the summer. Uh, so you guys have been still signing them electronically or popping in when needed. So we appreciate that. I'm still working on how to change the you asked me about the orientation of the pages, right? Yeah, I thought it was this committee. Somebody asked for that. It was you. Okay. I knew what somebody did. Still working on the change in the orientation of the pages so that they're easier to read. But anyway, um, 31 warrants were signed totaling $190,615.01. Um, if there's any other, any problems signing electronically, just reach out to Michelle or myself and we'll help you out if we can. In question in the future, Will all three of us have an opportunity? Because I go in person because I have a tough time bringing it up to sign online versus somebody that probably is really like you're really good, but they have to send it to your. No, I, other, I did you fix it that? Out. Yes, okay. IT fixed my email. But I figured. Are if, you able to sign electronically? It's been going okay. Yeah. As long as we have two signatures, whether it's in person or digital, and if we don't get them, we still send them to the town and they're pretty good about letting them go yeah. through still. And they'll, the accountant will kick it back if she has questions or something. And that's rare that that happens, but. I'll yeah, tell Michelle, if, I'll tell Michelle at, at Frontier that if one of you can't do it or whatever, let me know, she'll text me and I'll run over and I'll sign sign it. If mm -hmm. you guys can't do it electronically. Now, the way that was sent out was, was super okay. easy for me, so. Um, 
hold on. Okay, I'm sorry. No, that's okay. I just wanted to give you a little bit of information. Yeah. So the expense reports that I sent out really early, obviously in the budget season, a lot of the accounts haven't even been touched yet. And they've actually changed a ton between September 1st and today, but my cutoff for school committee was 831. So you're not seeing a lot of activity outside of salaries and wages. Uh, but I did want to note a couple of things that uh, are consistently going to come up month to month that I think are worth noting. I do believe we will find savings and other lines to cover them, but they are true overages, um, particularly with the teacher line. So uh, we had one step that was wrong for an employee when the budget was adopted that wasn't caught until after the budget was adopted and we've now adjusted. They're on the right step. They're receiving the right pay. It just has an impact. Um, on the numbers. And then we have a new hire that was hired in a, I'm saying hire a lot, a new hire hired in a higher column of the salary <laughs> schedule. <laughs> I couldn't think of an easier way to say that. Um, so when that happens, there's nothing we can do. We have a vacancy, we hire somebody that is at master's plus 30 or higher than we have masters in the budget, not a whole lot we can control there. So those two pieces net about a $10,000 increase in salaries, which is a significant number for a small school with a small budget. But uh, we are going to have savings from the clerical position because it is not a 12 month position any longer. Um, Chrissy found a great candidate and we're thrilled to have her on board. As far as I know, it's yep, been we so are. far so great. We are. Um, but that we negotiated for a 10 month contract with her. Uh, she negotiated. Uh, and then we have savings as well from the nurse leader position since that was reduced. If you recall that conversation prior to the end of the year that we went from a full-time position to a part-time position. It's actually just a stipend position Certainly. now. Mm -hmm. um, so there's savings to recoup there, but I just wanted to make you aware that those are real budget overages, which not only have an impact this year, they're gonna have an impact when we start the budget season next year. So the other thing uh, that I wanted to point out is buildings general repairs. So if you look at that line, we are already 50% spent and it is September 12th. Um, 5,000 of the 20,000 that we have earmarked is for the roof maintenance, which I don't know a ton about that in itself. I just know that there is an agreement for, it's not every other, it's every third year, I think, to tighten the screws, do some things up there to keep the roof in. Shape. Yeah, so just a general overview. <clears throat> this roof is a, if I'm quoted correctly, the a pole and beam roof really um i'm sure it's going to run some politics wrong in the town but they went to a what they thought was a less expensive model due to this way according to the roofer this type of roof shouldn't have been put on this type of building and so every few years the, the nails the, the fasteners are popping up and so we have to pay for maintenance for them to seal the hole hammer and seal each of the fasteners because they're popping up because of the way it's constructed um it's reaching toward the end where they no longer they keep on going to wide, wider diameter nail or screw, whatever they're using, and they're running out of options of how to adhere it. So we might be looking at a newer roof in, in the not too different future, which is going to upset a lot of people because it's a metal roof that's supposed to last forever. So we're gonna have to look at different, we're gonna have to look at different options, you know, that kind of thing. On the positive side, if they have one, if the green communities get involved. Maybe we can pour solar on this building. You know, it's it's primed for that if we take out those pines, which we'll talk about later. Um, so there might be get a little wind out of this, but um, I will bring in the experts when we get to that kind of thing. But it is one of those things I'm kind of, we start talking about it now, it won't be such a- Have we spent any money on the work yet? We spend $5,000 every other year, I think. I don't think it's every three years. I think it's, I think it's maintenance every year on it. I, I thought there was mo I thought there was year. money earmarked every year to. I thought it was they inspected. They inspected. I, we can get that. We, we, yeah, let's yeah, let's, let's oh, let me. How many years have we had the roof? Before my time, so. Um, it's not original. It's not no. original. Do you remember? <laughs> in fact, it's not original. I'm just wondering. If and that was debated in town year. too. We brought in. Pay for the cost of the roof, right? A new roof. We kind of What's that? If it's five thousand dollars every other year, we've probably come close to paying for the cost of a new roof. This is more than twenty. I, have, I think the new roof, this roof here that's up here right now, I have a in my mind it was like two hundred and something thousand dollars at that okay. time. At the price of metal roofing at that time was the 
was the best deal. If he went with it now, it would probably be three times that amount of money for a new metal roof. So it's okay. like the early 2000s that I was working on. Yeah. It, <clears throat> so we can get, you know, as we, I don't want to jump ahead because it's not on the agenda. Not only because it's not on the agenda, but I don't have all the information. So I can get, you know, have Bill come in. We can get general roof and we can have the person who's repairing the roof explain exactly what the problem is. Because you're going to have to know, well, you know, I mean, that's a longer conversation, but if, we went down a rabbit hole, but it feeds into, it feeds into <laughs> why are we paying this much money yeah. for a metal yeah. roof that usually are supposed to be maintenance free. And even if it's every other year, 5,000 of your $20,000 maintenance budget is a huge hit. So yeah. just something for And us especially if we have to use $5,000 more to fix something else outside. Right. Exactly. And that would be 50% of our yeah. budget for, for, yeah, for taking true. care of things. Well, you said 50% is spent already for the year. Do we have the rest earmarked or is that just wait and see what happens? Exactly. Kind of okay. Yeah. Um, so some of the, most of the other things are just maintenance related. Like we have the um, mini splits, the heat, heat pump units have the filters changed every year. We can't avoid that. We have to do preventative maintenance on those. Um, the exit signs, there were several exit signs and fire emergency lights that needed to be repaired that we don't know until they come through for their annual inspection. So, you know, there, thankfully it's nothing like, you know, the walk-in went down and we had to spend ten thousand dollars on that. You like so, say that out loud. It's all regular things outside. The roof is a regular thing. It's just a significant chunk of money for us. Um, I don't think I have anything else unless you have specific questions. I gave you the revolving fund update, which we'll continue to talk about as we get into budget season. I wanted to give you where we are starting the year and where we are for projections based on anticipated revenue and expenditures in those revolving funds. I don't think there's any surprises here. I think early childhood looks exactly like we've talked about in the past where revenue is coming down, expenses are going up. So we've been supplementing other ways with that. School choice, you can see we're spending more than we're bringing in. Uh, so you know, the pattern of what we've been planning for in the last couple of budget seasons is really starting to come to fruition now. So we'll have some more difficult conversations as we go into fall and start planning for next year. Good question on the school lunch time. Yeah, I'm just going to say the I same thing. money when it's free. Yeah. So we get fully reimbursed. There's a certain oh, rate. Yes. So federally, there's a certain amount that comes in and then the state subsidizes. So that's where the state free universal meals for everybody was. Right. Okay. It used to be that you were only reimbursed based on free and reduced lunch status. So a family had to apply and then you would get reimbursement over them. Okay. When during COVID, when it went universally free for everyone, federally it was being funded and the state was only covering a small portion. Federally, the USDA has cut back, but the state the last two years, and now it's going to be permanent. They just passed that it'll be universal free meals, which is which is <laughs> which is which is great for kids that don't get that balanced meal every day. At least they'll have a nice nice lunch every day and stuff. Which is, but also understanding that small schools like this, you know, and I, I don't know where all it all falls, but you get reimbursed. But what is the total cost for lunch? You know, I mean, the employees, the, you know, health care, all that kind of stuff where so if you see some savings there, although health care was the town, but if you see some savings there, it might be because we're picking up some salary points, you know, me at a part time. I don't know where it is here, but that might be it might be a bigger discussion because I know there's a lot of different right. moving parts. So part of the reason program. that Wheatley has such a good balance, actually all of the schools right now have healthy balances in the school lunch fund is because when we first received ESSER funding, school lunch was one of the funds that we bailed out because we had no idea what was going to happen. There was a point where it was like, okay, just feed kids and we'll see if we get funding for it. So we were able to save because we moved salaries to another funding source and we've saved up money. So if you look at this, Projected revenue is 95,000, which is all coming from federal and state funds and expenses are projected at 80,000. So we're not making a ton. Yeah. Um, and, you know, my projections are always pretty conservative, but, you know, the 147 that we're expected to have at the end of the year, that's savings from the last three school years. Okay. So, 
now is the time for us to start thinking about like we, we were able to buy the new cafeteria tables and you know what kinds of other things need to be taken care of which i think in the last four years we've done a good job district-wide starting to pay more attention to our kitchens and what we need for equipment um, did you get a new dishwasher here this year? That was on town warrant, mm -hmm. right? Dishwasher, and then, and then we did an oven, right? Did oven mm -hmm. did a wind shut. So, so the town has been really generous that in that regard as well. But now part. we can start looking at other <clears throat> smaller equipment and try to spend some of that down. You know, we want to keep a surplus because I'm always leery of what's going to happen with funding. Um, could, could we, um, if we had to, could we take $5,000 out of that account and pay for the generator? I don't um, you're talking about other expenses. I don't see that on the agenda here. I mean, <laughs> it's just a question, Later, just a general question. That's all. I mean, no, I'm just... you could not do that. Okay. Actually. The uh, DESE audits the books based on um, food school nutrition program and USDA regulations, and I don't think they would approve that kind of expenditure. Okay. They, yeah, they don't want you to make money on your lunch program to buy soccer balls or generators. Uh, I'm just thinking the generator, to, if we're the power's now, we're creating meals with the generator i'm just i'm thinking i'm thinking of, of you know how, how we can we take care of it so that's on here so we'll, we'll okay. get that we'll Sorry. get that background on that okay i'm done unless you have questions that's great okay. uh, are you, jessica are you looking to get out of here or are you having fun you <laughs> <laughs> i use that term loosely but yeah so um just she's on the agenda i didn't want to if she had to get out of here we'd move her up okay. um Principal's report, please. Uh, Happy New Year. The 2023-24 school year is up and running. Our students have fallen back into the routines of school so seamlessly, it's as if they never left. On August 28th, we have the WES annual New Year's Eve ice cream social. We got lucky with the weather. It was, I think, one of the four days that it didn't rain this summer, so that worked out. It was wonderful to see so many families in attendance. I always look forward to this event because it's so great to see our students and families back on campus after a long quiet summer quiet for me probably not for all the families that are that are there um summer work dan talbot david grace and kathy simmons worked diligently over the summer to get our facility prepared for a new school year our beautiful school was sparkling as we welcome students back on day one there's a long list of tasks that need to be completed each summer all the annual tasks were completed ahead of schedule which made it possible for dan to carve out time to repaint this beautiful library that's what looked <laughs> <laughs> The library was really in need of a refresh to match the new furniture we've been adding to the library over the past couple of years. It is our goal to create more cozy and collaborative spaces within the library. When seeing the new tables and chairs for the first time, one student remarked that it felt like they were in college. Um, and the, like is that, that's what college is to them. Nice table. <laughs> um, summer projects. The following is a list of summer projects that were completed. Library was painted. Uh, two adult bathrooms were painted, new cafeteria tables. Um, you probably noticed the new sidewalk near the field, uh, new bathroom floors in five of our bathrooms, um, and the rest will be done next year. Um, we tried something new instead of tile like we had, which was not ideal for a school, uh, especially in the pre-K bathroom. Like just those grout lines, you just can't, you just can't clean those up after a while. Um, so I invite you to stop in and check out our, these two bathrooms have new floors and they, they look, look nice and also are a little more durable and easier to keep clean and sanitary. Um, so we did the two adult bathrooms and then um, the three bathrooms that are in the pre-K area. Um, shampoo carpets, we got the attic insulated um seating in the garden area repaired roof maintenance fire exit signs repaired and the gym floor refinished and finally staff changes i'd like to welcome our new staff members kathy bresciano has joined the preschool team as an instructional assistant Catlin brown is taking up the role of special education teacher for students in kindergarten through grade four megan moleski is our newest ia and will be joining the first grade team and Rachel Senadella is already very busy keeping everything running smoothly as our new administrative assistant. Any questions, comments? How's Mary doing? She's doing great. <laughs> we miss her. Rachel's wonderful. Um, fortunately, Mary's across the street, so we yeah. do we do get to see her. Yeah.
Uh, public comment. Actually, just because I'm going to. I'm going to talk to you when you get to the rural schools bill. But I think right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Um, unfinished business capital update. Chrissy stole my thing. Sorry. Sorry. About it. Yeah, but I don't have visual. You don't have visual. I did a. Uh, I added this. I'll go through quickly because I know you guys have it. Um, I did all the schools only so you have a kind of an idea of the scope of the amount of stuff that's going through central office. So I'll kind of cruise through the other ones. But Frontier put into uh, put a new boiler system. Um, they're bringing a new tennis course that will be done by mid October, mid to late October. Um, everything's in except that's be cured and painted. The fence looks good. I saw the fencing today. Yeah, that looked good. We painted the. Uh, the lower half, we can't afford to paint the whole gym, so we did the lower half. And it half actually came out nice. I was worried about, I worry about silly things like that. There's the boys' locker room. Wow. You always wondered what, what that smell was, but we reached the floor. <laughs> um, right now, they're working on replacing the whole upper top of the press box. Um, so right now, it's actually, it's about, um, I think they're going to finish this weekend. Who's, who's doing it, you know? Uh, Wilcox. Oh, good. Yeah. So they're a little behind as any all contractors seem to be. Um, Deerfield, we had the town remove the bushes out front and we put new plantings in. Oh, I thought I had a picture. Right, I'm fixing it. They had um, AC units put in classrooms. We were able to there do the rebates. This is what we're trying to get done here at Waitley. So I'm going to say that's why I'm kind of emphasizing it. We paid for five and did 11 paid for eight no pay for five did 11 units because the amount of money we get in rebates right. we rolled it right back in um they got a new dishwasher if I need to show up. they got their floor refinished and a new shed sunderland got a new ac unit for the library they had some floor repair work done now we're at we we're at Wheatley. Um, this is the picture of that new flooring that Chrissy was just talking about. How that older tile, while um, probably a better, more costly material, far harder to clean. Here's the new sidewalk that goes to the grass. Um, tree removal is coming up. Um, we are working with the town um, to do that. Is that for them, Jenny? No. So we had a lightning strike and um, yes, um, during one of the big storms and that cluster of trees, the lightning went down. Um, the trees are stable at this point, but they're gonna slowly, we don't know what they're, if they're gonna slowly rot or not. So we have, are working with the town. Um, George has been great that we're gonna hire um, someone to do the top work in the town. DPW is gonna do the bottom work. So it's gonna take like a, was an eight to ten thousand dollar job and bring it down to just a couple thousand so um but we're going to do that we're scheduling that for um october november probably more, more like november to take those and i think we're gonna take all that whole set of pines there's like four of them there so they're reaching end of life anyways and so the taller they get the more the wind hits them better chance of a big storm coming down and as soon as you take one of the family out they become they get more acceptable with the wind. So if you leave one of them standing. So, so there's some money going to be coming out of that line item. So in that lightning strike, um, it's, it's going to take us, the generator also went down, including, um, also including was our uh, server had a few boards fried as well. Like it did, it did something, but it was very hard to be able to prove it. We talked about it going for insurance and stuff. If we were able to bund it all together, maybe it would have been worthwhile. But you know, we talked to the town, and um, they really didn't think they're going to be able to say that all three things were connected to it. But all things happened at the yeah. same time. Um, and we'll talk about the generator repair later. But the, I guess we'll call it the motherboard. That's not what it's called. Um, it's burnt out on it. It's a you know five thousand dollar repair. Um, and then. We paint the library, got new tables. What a, the tables are great. Generator, uh, Conway got a new generator installed. Just to that, 
Just make us feel better. Generator, <laughs> their generator works great. It took uh, like three years to get. And it did take us three years to get it. It's about sixty thousand dollars. So. So yeah, they paid for it three years ago. Um, to, uh, they AC two classrooms, and now they are two classrooms ready to be done with their entire building being AC. So they're happy up there. They got a new range, which has been an absolute nightmare. Um, but I don't need to go about that here. They got new stage curtains. Um, and new flooring um, in their classrooms in front office. They rent the uh, bought a storage container. Is they're running out of storage there. Might we, be something we consider. We, uh, it's uh, the biggest part about these great things about these things that they're pest free. They get hot as heck in them, but they are going to have to keep some something in there to keep the, the humidity down inside of them so nothing mold gets moldy and they will yeah. get moldy inside. Yeah, storage is an issue here too. Yeah, that's what I said. So you can kind of use them as a the guinea pig and see how that works out. They got new partitions, but you can see we're going to go after soon. <laughs> that floor doesn't look as nice as weight loose. That's all I got. So, thanks. That's all. Um, so that's the capital update. We'll talk about the generator in a minute. If we have any questions on the presentation. Okay. And we're up to new business. We got Laura going to do some some wonderful things with her cards there, right? <laughs> I um, yeah, I wanted to make sure I didn't skip anything in filling the committee in on the two new areas of curriculum that we updated and um, are launching this year. So um, after last year, which was my first year, we conducted two year-long research and selection processes for new ELA curriculum and new math curriculum for the school. And um, this was something that the principals and the teachers were all interested in doing um, to greater and lesser degrees, but pulling together all of the schools um, to make a common choice so that we can have PD together, so that we can collaborate in grade level teams, so that students moving between schools have a seamless transition. And so last year we had um, a committee for each subject area and we had teachers from all four schools from all seven grade levels, special education teachers, uh, specialists, and we actually, that came to consensus on the decisions. Um, we decided on the ELA programs in April and May, and we selected the math program in June. And um, we have funding through grants from DESE to purchase most of what we need. So we had about $140,000 from two different grants on ELA. One was called the um, uh, High Quality Instructional Materials Grant, HQIM, and one was called the Accelerated Literacy Grant. And then for math, we have a high quality math materials grant. Um, so we're happy that we have everything. And we capitalized on the grants, which had to be spent down by the middle of the summer, but we're not launching both curriculums at once because that would be too much for anyone. Um, even one of the programs is actually too much. So we're staggering. Um, and the program that we're officially adopting this year is the English Language Arts programs. So. We have a screener. It'll be the second year of using Devils 8, which is the latest version of um, an early literacy screener. That's in all grades. It's about five to eight minutes for um, a one on one teacher student check in. And in the younger grades and the older grades, it's an exercise that students could do all together. Um, and it is like a checkup, like going to the doctor. It takes about as long as getting on the scale and taking your temperature and getting your your blood pressure measured and it's just to make sure that nothing changes um, and that we don't we don't miss any <coughs> changes that could indicate the need for extra attention. Um, it's just a wellness check basically three times a year. And then the program we're using in kindergarten through second grade for foundational skills in reading and writing, how students learn to read and write their letters is um, called UFLI. It's an acronym, UFLI, it stands for University of Florida Literacy Institute. Um, it's interactive, it's systematic, it's explicit, it follows the research on reading science. And um, after that half hour where the students are learning something all together, the second half hour is um, differentiated instruction. And teachers can pull small groups, teachers can meet with individuals, students can do write poetry, they can draw pictures of things that have been read out loud, it's a more creative time. That's one hour of the day. Um, and that's just K through two. And in some schools in the district, our grades will be doing it um, 
because there was a little bit of a bubble from the pandemic around meeting. So this is um, an intervention tool and something we can use as kids get older. Um, then every classroom has another hour of ELA, so across the district, 120 minutes. And the second hour is called um, EL Language Arts, which EL is Expeditionary Learning. And it's, um, I wouldn't say it's project based, but it's project driven, where there is a, an, um, a topic for the module. Um, it could be pollinators, or it could be human rights, or it could be um, kindergarten begins with a study on toys, and first grade does um, tools and work. And over the course of this module, students have three units, and the first one is mostly reading, and um, they get a lot of background information about what's considered a tool and what kinds of tools are in our families and what kinds of tools are in the world, what kinds of things do they do. In the second um, unit, students do more independent reading about tools and work and maybe research a tool or um, uh, interview people about tools. And then the last unit, there's a, a creative project. Um, I think the tools and work project is making a magnificent thing, a tool to, that helps the classroom do a job. So um, this in the, the other hour of the day in the LA that is not foundational skills and differentiation is an integrated research, uh, reading, writing unit um, that, that um, is standards aligned but also offers opportunities for teachers to bring their own personalities and genius and strengths to the classroom, which is something we are really looking for. Is obviously, we wanted rigor and high standards and accessibility, but we also wanted it to be, um, if one part of the reading program is more scripted, we wanted to make sure that there was room for responding to individual interests um, and letting teachers be inventive um, and invite the community in in the other part. So we're launching that fully, and it's um, a really big lift. I just want to say, I don't know what my updates will look like later, but we had three finalists for the English Language Arts program, and they were all highly rated. They all offered background knowledge. They all, they, there were great things about all of them, um, but each of the other two had um, a piece missing that we really didn't feel we could replace um, consistently across all schools. For example, one of them didn't offer a complex text and um, we would have to be leaving teachers on their own to find complex rigorous texts and we thought that could happen really differently in different places. We don't want that to be our lift. And so we chose the program where the lift was teachers are going to have a large growing curve. And so the teachers are absorbing this because it was the best for the kids. But if there are a lot of resources to manage, a lot of resources to organize. Um, I can say that at this point, all teachers have had training in UFLY and in English language arts by the professional development providers and in DIBBLES. So we have done foundational training in everything. No one's just being thrown in. Still, that's three different programs. And um, I, I can tell it. It's going to get easier, but um, it'll take us uh, a few years to really own the program. In fact, I was looking at implementation research and it says the first year is really just to try it and the second year is do it and the third year is own it and the fourth year is refine it. So I'm thinking that we will follow that research and just um, support teachers in each of those places and not try to be owning and refining before we really have learned that thing. Um, done it a couple of times. Um, do you have questions about ELA before I tell you about math? Um, you're doing a great job. Oh, yeah, talking a little so quickly? Silly. No, you're doing <laughs> <Okay. laughs> Sounds great. So this is really going to be consistent across the four schools as far as like yes. how kids are learning to read. Yes. I love that. It's already amazing for me I, in just the second week of school, second well, with the school walking around and finding learning targets posted in all of the fifth grade classrooms that are recognizable to me and then watching teachers go into each other's classrooms um schools with more than one grade level but we will be having um on our early release fridays all year i think we have something like 11 early release fridays dedicated to grade levels from across the district getting together and our first one is not this friday but the one after and everyone's bringing one thing that's working and one thing that they need help with so that we can workshop it and um, you know, no one will be alone in 
I already see the level of thought about the program rising because they get excited about someone's solution to something that was a barrier and um, teachers are making things and copying them for each other and putting them in folders and just sharing ideas so it's and it was it was a real struggle for us here with the singleton classes I, I feel like there's more support now there is more support so the sixth grade teachers when they get together they're all speaking the same language they're all yeah. hitting the same challenges to, for the most part um, yeah. and able to support each other through that so sure. it's it's going to make a huge difference it makes more sense for us professional development wise as well yeah um, it really does because yeah. although i mean it, there's some strangeness about how everything works five different school committees and um we do better when we act as a as a unit because we can support each other so we're very excited about this it is, it is a huge teacher lift and i, I cannot yeah. emphasize that enough yep um and we have a great deal of very um, perfectionist teachers who who want to get it right right away, and it, it's that's putting a lot of a lot of pressure on. So we're just making sure that we're supporting. Um, we've kind of dedicated all of our time to this. So um, we agreed as an admin team that we wanted most of the the early release time to be for this. Um, our staff meetings here will be about more work time for the new curriculum and you know, PLC meeting. Everything is around this so that we can maximize the amount of time they get in the school yeah. to be able to do that without also taking them out of class more than necessary. That's the other the other goal is to get them everything they need, but to leave them in the class as much as, as possible. So hearing you talk reminds me that I'm just gonna tell you this some sometimes I'll say now that I just keep hearing how much the teachers appreciate the work you did on the schedules. Every teacher tells me, like, Chrissy did it for us, and it's working really well, and we're so grateful. So I know it was a huge crossword puzzle. <laughs> it was. Teachers are wondering, how is there going to be time for everything? hundred, You know, all of the new requirements in 80 minutes for math a day, even though we're adopting the new program next year, we made time. We're doing 80 minutes of math. Um, and they were really um, grateful that you puzzled that out. Well, it was one of those, I've, I've talked about it like pulling the thread on a sweater like I just wanted to do one small piece of something to see what would a schedule look like so I did a sixth grade schedule put those minutes fit in and I'm like well if I did six I should probably do fifth because we're going to share some support staff and, and then it was like well I might as well do this and then I'm like this is so great because <laughs> yeah, now we'll I can right schedule now. students who receive services to come out of their classes at the time that makes the most sense for them to come out uh, and so yeah. it was yeah and I was hoping it will, it, I would look back and say that was time well spent. So, yeah, yeah. so far, so good. Yes. Um, the math program had a different committee, but it was structured just the same way. And um, the math grant came through much later. So even though we had made our decisions about the, how it worked out that reading took the lead um, because there is a lot of energy right now around reading and we know that math is also in need of having an updated curriculum that's consistent, but staggering them is going to be in the best interest of the kids because the teachers will be able to get trained and um, not have be out of the classroom for double appointments. That said, this year, so many teachers were excited about the new math programs that they asked if they could have a soft launch this year without the training and just sort of, um, um, you know, if we're going to, especially we have some teachers who are new to the district, so they didn't want to do something for one year and then get the training and the new thing. It wasn't a good investment of time. And then we had to think about, but if you do something without being trained, then is there a chance that we might either not do it well enough or be, um, or form an opinion that's not based on knowing enough. You might think this program doesn't support X or Y, but it did, but just nobody showed you. So we gave teachers choices over the summer and they, well, we presented the choices over the summer and then the, when teachers came back, we had selections. And so um, the math program for K-5 is called Bridges. Um, it's from the Learning Center. And um, the Bridges program has three components to it. And one component is called Number Corner. It's a standalone math meeting. I think they might have it in Northampton Elementary Schools. Um, oh, but your kids are here, so. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the, um, the math meeting is a 20 to 30 minute. You can design it differently depending on how long your periods are. It can be mostly 20 minutes here. It can be an add-on to morning meeting. It can be an end of the day meeting. It can be a comeback from lunch meeting. But the kids have five workouts that build computational fluency and relationships between number and operation. 
and they start in kindergarten and build on the same five workouts through fifth grade. And um, it's a way of hitting all of the standards and doing lots of review and lots of fluency practice. And it's lively and engaging and hands-on. So there's a, a calendar and they flip over a page every day and there's a picture and the pictures build a pattern and then the kids notice the pattern and write equations that match the cards. That's one of the workouts. Um, another workout is collecting something and then creating the data to go with it. So using a spinner in the younger grades and doing more complex like weather temperature related data and order grades, but they learn how to graph it in the bar graph and, a, um, and in a um, coordinate grid and they do these routines all the time. So 83% of the teachers in the district are doing that. The number corner this year, even though nobody was required to do anything, they wanted to have the math meeting. And that's a lot. So we did do a training today. And all of the K2 teachers who had opted into that were trained this morning for three hours. And the um, three, five teachers who opted into it were trained this afternoon for three hours. And that feels good because it's just like the other program. I walk around to all of the classrooms and the schools, and it works both um, vertically, I mean, horizontally, but also <clears throat> vertically. Um, Lacey can go into um, Stephanie's room, and they both have a calendar that they can see you know, how their kids are recording things similarly and differently, and they can see, mm -hmm. um, you know, how they can support the routines, because even though the content is different, their routines are the same. Um, and then the other part of Bridges is um, it's going to be a one-hour block or a 50-minute block, depending on the school's configuration. It's either 50 minutes and 30 minutes or 60 minutes and 20 minutes, depending on the days in different places. But the large block um, has two halves. The first half is called problems and investigations. It's essentially whole group instruction where new material is presented by the teacher with a with a key problem that um, embodies the content or the strategy that kids will be working on. And then the second part of the block, it just seamlessly flows into what's called workplaces. And workplaces is essentially differentiated practice. So that's where students will be um, accelerated or get extra help or play review games with partners and the workplaces are um, um, that there are solo things to do, there are partner things to do, and it's set up very intentionally. Like every unit has three to five centers that are intentionally put out to support lessons that have happened earlier in the year or that just happened. And um, so we're excited for that. The program ends after fifth grade. The sixth grade um, is using, as of this year, illustrative mathematics which is a highly rated, um, do you use that in high school? I think maybe I am. Yes. Yeah, yes. I am. Illustrative yeah. Mathis, I am. Gender, I am. Yeah. Yep. So we're using that here. It's also one of the resources that they use at Frontier. Um, it's not a core resource source at Frontier at this time, but it will be familiar to kids and it's highly rated and it has the same philosophy as Bridges in terms of how kids learn mathematics, so it will be a smooth transition for students going from fifth to sixth and sixth to seventh. And next year is the official year where we devote and um, dedicate all of our PD time to math the way we're doing it for the LA this year. And if you have any questions, it's my favorite thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> Give me join us. <laughs> um, I can I give a couple of shout outs? Is that true? But you give shout outs. Um, I'm to ask him, actually. So, can I give a shout? <laughs> um, <laughs> this is a, a huge lift for teachers, as I mentioned, but it's a huger lift um, for the curriculum director. Taking on the whole process her first year in the district was kind of amazing. Um, she has the ability to keep 700 plates spinning at the same time is always there for what anybody needs um i'm making number lines tonight <laughs> <laughs> um and is just incredibly supportive and without the person in that role having those qualities the lift that the teachers have to do would feel near impossible so knowing that the support is there makes all the difference in the world so i want to thank you for and I, i'm assuming you don't sleep because i don't know how you get all the things done that you get done and she's the i will quote her i can do that yeah. every time something comes up she's the one saying i can do that so it's wow. greatly appreciated
That's so nice. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the thank presentation. You. Yeah. Yeah. Will you give us an update like towards the end of the year, maybe? As you like. Or, yeah. You're in charge here, Bob. You can I'm just I'm just asking. I mean, sure, just, I'd love yeah. To. yeah. I mean, love to hear from the teachers too and see how you know yeah. you're one thing telling us. Chrissy's one thing, but it's actually the teachers who who are doing it, and maybe you know have one of them come in or or two of them come in or something and, and talk about it. I mean, it would be yeah. great. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that sounds really a great invitation. Thanks. So well, thank you. Hearing from the kids is is important too. Yeah. Um, the sixth grade teacher came to me today to say the kids are so excited about what they're doing. So wow. And it's early to be so excited about what they're yeah. doing. Um, and it was, I said, is it just the book they're reading? They really like that book. It's Percy Jackson. Yeah. So no, it's the whole the whole way the, the lesson was presented. Got them excited. Oh, so that's such well, a great well, testament to the committee that yeah. Mark yeah. met regularly. And it, we could just keep on the mutual <laughs> love society. Yeah. Thanks for giving yeah. the teachers all that release time last year to be on committees. <laughs> but this, 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 this the new program must be helping with MCAS in the future too. Well, we hope so. I mean, <laughs> that's. Yeah. 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 I mean, like we do well. Yeah. I mean, will we do better? I don't know. I don't know, but I do know that there's typically, this is just typical, typically there's um, a small regression with a new curriculum before progression. And uh, one of the people that I was reading about implementation, I can't remember his name, but I can get it for you. He researched implementation of new programs and he thought that if you did it for four years, it would get a quarter better and then half better and then three quarters and then reach fulfill, like fulfill its potential. Um, but it turns out that for, three years, there was very little change. And in the fourth year, it went all the way. And so that's because of the cumulative knowledge and the routines that kids that develop. It's how teachers become experts in the subject area and how much more natural it is for them to do it. And it still goes the distance, but you don't have even increments when you're gaining on your goal. You you just have to keep putting in the practice time in it. So I would say that I definitely believe it will help our scores and in general, um, our transition into middle school and high school. I just think it's gonna be an excellent foundation, but I would say next year might not be the year that we get the evidence. It might be two years. Two years. Yeah. Well, thank you. Yeah. Anybody else have any more questions or anything like that? Okay. Well, thank you for coming, Laura. You can, oh. you can stay, <laughs> you can okay. stay if you want, you but you do have to do this. You do have another life. You do. You get to do this twice on Thursday and then next Tuesday. So we've got it recorded. You can just play that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you were good. You only looked at one card. That's, I think Bob knows that I have a goal to work on public speaking. So. <laughs> you did a great job. I did great. Thank Very you. Very good. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. Bye. bye. Appreciate it. Nice to be with you all. Thanks. I wonder. Yeah. Resolutions and support rural schools bill, and we need to vote on it afterwards. Hi. So, Jessica, you are going to present this? Am I? I thought you were. That's why you're here, right? I'm here in case there were questions about it. I oh, okay. I can talk about it if you want. You can come up and sit with you us up here work. if you want. I, you know, I'm to okay. Uh, gotcha. Um. So yes, in your packet, you should have a um, the resolution to support the rural schools bill. So basically, um, in my uh, superintendent's report, you can see the money that we got this year from rural schools. Um, our local legislators have been working very hard at this, but it, it really does take um, the voice to get across the state because you got to get people who aren't winning with rural schools to be voting on it for us to continue to get money. Um, and so this is a resolution um, basically to send a message to um, our state legislators that you know we need to continue to work toward that $60 million funding model that they came up when they did the rural schools report. That was it in a, do you want to? Yeah, you, I think I'm, there's like 31 provisions in the bill. So rural aid is one of them, bringing the funding for that up to the $60 million that was recommended. Um, but there's a bunch of other things. There's a lot of transportation. There's stuff for special, special education. There is a uh, declining enrollment fund that all of our schools would really benefit from in addition to the rural aid. Um, and so the pipeline of special education teachers, that all of, 
It got all types of support if we did eventually move to full regionalization. I guess, but um, support and financial support, but logistical support and financial support if that happened. Um, so uh, I went to the Massachusetts Association of School Committees down the hill back in May, and I met with Natalie Blay and Joe Comerford, who are the sponsors of this bill. Um, and I asked, what can I do to help? And they gave me this long list of things we can do to help. Um, so one of them is this resolution. Um, another one is sending a joint letter um, signed by public officials. And with your permission, I would like to add your three names. That's OK. Just It's basically the, the same content as this resolution. Thank you. Um, Waitley is already well represented. I sent the letter to Chris Palmer Fortune. So we've already got seven members of the Select Board and Finance Committee and Bill Smith. So thank you. You guys are like the complete setup at the whole hands. <laughs> well, thank you for all your hard work. I know you've been working on it for a while. You should check out the website we made. That's all local. That's all rurallschoolsma.org. Perfect. Thank you. And we need to, uh, I need a motion and a second, it, please. So moved. Second. All in favor? Thank you. Thank you, Jess. School lunch, petty cash. Oh. So. <laughs> I read that like petty cash. Okay. Yes. So lunch is free for students for their first lunch. Uh, however, <laughs> if they want a second <laughs> lunch, or if somebody brings lunch and they want to just buy milk, they actually have to buy the milk. You can't count that as a reimbursable meal legally. So we need to have some cash on hand. There's also some staff that on occasion will go through the line, grab a slice of pizza or something, and staff have to pay. Adult meals are not included as reimbursable meals. So we need to have a cash bank here. And at one point years ago, there was a cash bank um, pre my time. I don't know where it went or what happened to it. Um, it was absorbed somehow into the school lunch account. And we haven't paid a lot of attention to having a cash account here because lunches have been free. Um, but we had an audit at Conway uh, last fall and since then have used that as a model to assess the other elementary schools to make sure that when it's time for Waitley's audit, the same boxes don't get missed on the checklist. Uh, so we want to be sure that we have a way for staff or students who want just a carton of milk or a second lunch if they so want to buy a second lunch. Um, so in order to do that, we have to have some cash. So the we spoke to the town in order to get a check, uh, which I believe is going to be made payable to the food service director so he can go cash it and then give it to Kathy in the kitchen here so they can set it up with the POS system. Um, in order to do that, school committee has to vote because it's not normal that you would just go get cash to have in the school. We're asking for $111.25, which is okay, also... You <laughs> got it, sweetie. Yeah, I'm just going to break the bank. <laughs> Again, before my time. For the year? So it's basically just an exchange, right? So if somebody comes right. with, you know, yes. They need know, change. Just to make change. When you, just when you make ahead. more than $11, you deposit that. Correct. Okay. One hundred and eleven dollars. One hundred eleven dollars. Sorry. Yes. So anything <laughs> over your bank is deposited as a sale, and that balances with the POS system. Um, it's one hundred and eleven dollars and twenty-five cents only because, again, pre my time, somebody established that some food service director or business manager said that that was going to be the amount, and two of the five schools actually have that bank already existing. So ma to maintain consistency. We're going to set everyone up with the same bank. So probably someone deposited it or said this is what we have. What's I'm sure what it ended up. This is right, yeah. right, right. Well, this is what was left over from the previous the cash Seconded. Thank you. All in favor? Okay. So moved. <laughs> Appreciate it. <laughs> Superintendent's group ad agreement. Um, so I'm going to ask that we table that because yeah. we're. Uh, we don't have the red. We met it last week and a couple people didn't show up. Uh, some guy named Rob didn't show up. Um, but uh, we, at the, at the last meeting, we get stuck again. And I took stuff to the attorney. I met with the attorney yesterday, actually. And um, we'll hope to have it soon. Did you pick a date, another date, or we have it? Okay. I, I just, you know, I got, I got taken into uh, 
school committee stuff. So I'll be working on that. All right. Down with the stretches. And we talked about the generator a little bit. You so, want to talk a little bit yeah, more a little about more. this? So, so the generator repair, so we had an estimate done. It's around $5,000. The town then went and had an estimate done after our estimate was done and it came in around the same amount within a couple hundred bucks. Um, when the, so basically the history of the generator, we talked about this a little bit before the meeting started, but the history of the generator is we bought it used from a member from the, you know, from Joe Morawski. You know, Mike Morawski in son. town. He's a contractor. Mm -hmm. did, oh, Joe's did, son. <laughs> it, it, he did, he did work up a DA. DA had this generator that he got for, maybe for doing work up there i don't i don't know but the town paid ten thousand dollars for it and they said we're uh, I'll, I, you should. right basically they said we'll install it at you know here and make this a emergency shelter and so on and so forth emergency shelter here for our town right and so when they did that we put into our budget maintenance of the annual maintenance mm -hmm. of it is around it's not, I don't like even that. think it's that much. No, I don't think it's that much either. I think we've spent eight hundred this year. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I think we spent eight hundred over the summer, but part of that was because we needed some parts and things. I don't even think it reaches a thousand dollars normally. Okay. So we, we spend a few hundred dollars each year as a part of our maintenance budget to um to maintain it. The lightning struck, now we have a major repair. If we take that out of our maintenance line item, which we already discussed is about halfway depleted, we'll then have $5,000 left for the remainder of the year. So if anything major breaks, we will have to go to other kind of reserve funds. Um, so we asked, we went to the town and said, basically, can you guys pay for this perhaps out of ARPA funds? Because they are they have a couple hundred thousand dollars left for this year. You know, it's a small amount. Um, they voted at the last select board meeting not to that they felt that that is maintenance and ma this isn't a maintenance thing. Um, and they said it wasn't, there wasn't any urgency to repair it. However, they have a meeting tonight and maybe I believe, um, which I'm going to try to go to as soon as we get okay. out of here, mm -hmm. I'm going to stop there as a representative and say, and when I was not to interrupt you, yeah, but, right. but to say this was caused by a lightning strike. And three, you know, three things got damaged during this lightning strike. So it's not general maintenance. It's something either you get your insurance company to figure out how much all this stuff cost and put a claim in or help us out with the make this this problem that a lightning strike did it. It's not general maintenance, but I was gonna, you know, coerce them saying put them in a bad spot, maybe. Well, I mean if the town would like to use this building as a shelter exactly then that is part of their responsibility i mean right. it's not here for the school so right. right and we didn't acquire the generator through school committee this the town got the generator and right. placed it here so there's that little bit of like we have this little tension with the town on that kind of thing like what's the school thing what's the town thing um and so when you go tonight the you know obviously the emergency shelter they're going to take that risk you know we need to heat the building if we lose power um and then also if we lose power we lose everything that's in the lock-in after you know, 48 hours so depending on how many thousands of dollars of foods in the lock-in um you know that kind of thing so that's another kind of important it's an important factor so they basically said they didn't want to use arbor money so they may be coming around tonight i also know that george has been in the ear down there that said like basically you know because my understanding was we take care of annual maintenance, they're going to take care of the gen, you know what I mean? But there was never talked about major repair because who would have thought major repair? Had we had already done the um, yearly maintenance on it mm -hmm. before this happened? Yep. Okay, I think you should say that too. Yep. Like we've spent our money this year right. on the generator. Yep. So this was an unforeseen cost. I'll work them tonight. And in, in just to let you know, to prepare you guys for the long range, is, is that yep. Wheatley is going to have a tight budget this year. And so we need to right from the beginning be conscious of not like, hey, well, you can take it out of choice or you could, you know, that kind of stuff. We got to be cautious about how we're going to fund next year's budget because the same woes we had last year are going to repeat um, based on, and I jump in, Shelly, if I misspeak, but based on where the staffing is in this building in a sense that people are stepping and getting colas in a, in a small in a small budget plus, the, you know, another $10,000 addition trying to get quality staff you know um, the market's very difficult we can't hold our guns up we're only going to hire 
you know, masters or below or bachelors only, or you know, the, you know we got to go with the best candidates we can get. And so anyway, so that's, it's going to, those are going to come up this year. So we're kind of warning you ahead of time that some of those reserve accounts we're going to be using to offset next year's budget to make a agreeable number to the town, which is already going to be us going to be stretching a little bit is my guess. Jelly, did I misspeak on that? No. Right. We also didn't spend as much ARPA money as they allocated for us for the projects that they approved. Right, that was the part that surprised us. So we asked for money you know for money is about, ARPA about money to different. spend on um, uh, separation for retirement and money for dishwasher and flooring. Dishwasher and flooring all came in under. under. We actually gave back more than the five thousand dollars than that we requested. So they wouldn't have been giving the school any additional ARPA money. It would have been just using the money we already gave back. But it, from when I listened to the thing, the, the select board member said they didn't feel like the purpose of that ARPA money was for new capital projects, not for not for maintenance. I wasn't at the meeting. Um, the same nice I mean, one could have said it's not maintenance; it's a major repair. You know, as far as over five thousand. So, so, right. so maybe they're going to use different funds. Maybe they yeah. since it's talking about it. we did. So we'll find out tonight, 10, and we'll get Bob over there to represent. All right. Um. All right. So that is the generator update. Okay. Um. I have nothing except for welcome Henry to our our thank you, thank you. our group, our committee. Club. Yeah. I think uh, it's great to have some new blood, I would say, and welcome. We'll Glad to be that blood. Yeah. 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 We and we have, wait till this gets to yeah. <laughs> and we, have, we have nothing from the collaborative and just Darius, if you have something for us at all. Uh, just running through um, what we didn't talk about, um, the equity audit in the market calendar for the 28th at 6. And we did we send out that message the other day to say that now the community has a copy. Um, and um, you should have received a copy a month ago. And such, we already talked about free ranch brawl. Take a look at the rural aid numbers. Um, you know, we will, you know, we did get a significant amount more, and that's going to be very helpful. Unofficial. Unof this is an unofficial number. This was based on <laughs> oh, numbers true. provided to us. These are numbers based on provided to us by the MASS, the Massachusetts Association of just for our um, school, rural aid for just our school or our district. All It'll our be all five schools, schools, schools get their own. Okay. Do we know how much that is? About uh, is it total? in your report? For out of all five schools. No, just for, for us. For Wheatley, you get forty five thousand in change. And what do we have to spend it on? Anything. Anything. So the question's gonna these are some of the discussions that we're gonna have to have is and as I speak with our legislators, legislators, is that if we can't have consistent funding, we can't offset our budget onto it year to year. Right. So, you know, I think it's going to be safe to offload some of it, but we're going to have to make that assessment and start talking early on. Already, I got a note from this. Our, so we have uh, these reps on some of these state committees that guide us through budget season to tell us what's going on at Capitol Hill. Um, you call it Capitol Hill when it's Massachusetts, but anyways, Beacon Hill. Um, and they said it's gonna be a bad year because that revenue is already falling short coming in. And so they're projecting already that next year is gonna be tighter than this year. So where are they going to, next year's budget, where are they gonna pull back? You know, if they change this by 5 million, all of a sudden we're gonna be dealing with, you know, maybe $25,000, you know, so we're gonna have to make just like we do with transportation at the regional district, at region, we don't know what the transportation is going to be funded at. We usually go conservative and use the savings. Um, we're going to have to make some sort of decision about how do we offset this budget with this money. Those are going to be discussions during budget season in three months. So the challenge with this, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you, is you have to use it in this fiscal year. We don't have the money yet, so we don't know when we can start spending when it. Does the money yeah. come? They have not made official awards. So as soon as they make the award, but you only have till June 30th. So mm. we've built this year's budget already. We could offset some of our revolving funds and save the money that way, but it's not the way that they should do it. They really should fund it, as Darius said, consistently and build it in as one of your cherry sheet revenues so that you know what you're going to get so that you can use it for your budget because that's part of the purpose of it is that so many rural schools are not getting much SOA money, which you're gonna talk about next. Yep. And it's supposed to help 
supplement that. But if we can't rely on it, right. it doesn't help our budgets. Correct. And there are so many other rural schools that are super struggling from budget to budget. They're just burning the money from budget to budget. They used they use ESSER money to offset their budget, and now they're short. Now they're going to use real aid to offset their budget because they have nothing. But we've been able to stay one step ahead as a district to not be year to year trying to burn. You know, we're trying to save from year to year, but just kind of like so because some other districts got hundreds of thousands of dollars and what are they doing with it they're gonna they're and then i've already talked to some of their superintendents they are gonna have to make cuts because they use that for money and nothing really backfilled it completely yeah. and that budget yeah. keeps going up and up and so so we currently use rural aid as sort of a, a catch all anything that we don't have money for in the budget and we typically wait until the springtime to start spending it because we save it at like emergency purposes and then if we don't have an emergency you know say chrissy what do you need for the school and it's allowed us to buy some extra things we might have even paid for this library the, furniture the stuff um, that is nice to have but not necessary yeah but so. also still yeah not like <laughs> we, a generator we not, not like a generator updating things <laughs> yeah. so i funny. would advocate when we find out what the money is that we continue to reserve if we can a portion of it for that because otherwise you can't do these kind of upgrades like we've been doing and it's really important to do those pieces too well and the, the building during covid the building turned 30 and i had wanted to have a big celebration but it was <laughs> Celebrating of any kind at that point, but the building refused. So I'm 29. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's all I want. Um, and so you start to see where things need to be updated, and sometimes it's a tweak like paint. It was a beautiful like 1980s peach color in here until a few weeks ago. Um, but you know, one of the one of the things that you notice when you walk in here is it's a well cared for building. Yeah. It would keep things shiny and clean and we want it to be a very pleasant, welcoming atmosphere for our, our students. So um, being able to do these things at the end of the year, I always have yeah. this like little wish list in my head if there's money left over. So we've done this in phases. Actually on Thursday, a new couch like that and two new chairs like that are also being delivered. So we'll have another little seating area in the library. I, I really I picture the library being this place where kids like meet to work on projects together that's a project table that we ordered some maker space. Um, nice. So in order to do those things, we need to find the little extra pockets here. And yeah. There. You have anything else, Darius? Well, without just explaining, just so you, because it's good to, yeah. to be talking about this so you understand how it works. So chapter 70 money, which is also kind of considered student opportunity act money. So I kind of showed what our increases were for there because all we got was $60. They upped it to $60 per pupil. I heard you just say $60. <laughs> we're called. We can add it to the $100. Yeah, $100. So, but so when you look at, so there, there is legislation, and we will probably start seeing some advocacy for us to get involved there as well about changing hold harmless, which we, is a zone we're in, which means your enrollment is not increasing. So you're not getting more Chapter 70 money. So you're only getting the $60 per student a year from the state. So if our just, just kind of doing it this way. If our budget raises by two and a half percent, which is the average, let's just say, you know, what our associate, you know, what our our employees are getting, just on a, on a an average year, um, you know, we're short fifty thousand dollars in growth a year that the state's not offering. To even if it usually pays a third, it's now going to start paying less and less and less. And really, so they're starting to recognize that the message is out there. In the in the politics and they're talking about how to change the whole marvelous category and it's going to be some of the legislation that again our reps are they're all over i'll give them it they're all over public education right now they understand i should folks before who they were and what they did but they, they understand how we're kind of caught in between um the unintended consequences of soa because soa really student opportunity act when i say that really it went to the most students but you can go to the most students by going to 10 districts and so, you know, that kind of thing. And oh, there's 100, I think it's 119 districts that are being hurt by the SOA funding model. So they're going to make some changes if they want to keep their jobs. But anyway, you can see the numbers for Chapter 70. I mentioned that we have fiscal year tax collection is below benchmark. So we have to be prepared for less coming in next year. And um, after the reorganization of Frontier, I'll be sending a letter out for. Um, renegotiation my contract is a contract here for me but my contract says you have to make a decision whether or not you're going to renew me or not by january but because you guys have to do joint meetings and such and then there has to be a negotiation of the contract within there there's really something that's going to have to start like october november 
unless people want to have meetings in December. But it's one of those things that the, we have to have a joint meeting just to decide if people want to renew. So I'm just saying that on the radar that that is going to be some of the busy work because it is. And if we don't have our regional agreement in place and put in place, the hope is to put that in place so that we can try it out. There doesn't seem to be a lot of attention around me right now. I'll probably make that assumption, but go ahead and, put, go ahead and create some. You never know, I'm walking out of here. Um, but um, we might want to try that regional group agreement, see how the voting works and, and maybe try to do that in practice. But that was the hope of the regional. Are we going to talk about this on the 28th at all? No. 28th, we are I really kept it to be just a conversation about um, the equity audit. We're going to reorganize. Right. We're going to have an equity audit. You know, it's going to be a discussion about that, an hour meeting and such. If I put other stuff on, then I didn't know if you just bring it up as a not to get into a full blown conversation, but this is on our radar that we have to do in a joint meeting. Yeah. Another one, probably November or right, something but I like that. I also might try to do joint meeting. You know, we can talk about they also can be done virtually, and you know, especially these really, if you think they're going to be under. 30 minutes maybe we just do that i don't know yeah okay but i hear what you're saying but right now let's try not to crowd that meeting okay get people in get people out keep the one focus that's all i got can you share that with me digitally if yeah. no one else has anything like the motion to adjourn you move. all in favor <laughs> adjourn. wait 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 who did what i'm trying to record that here Beth Moves. made the motion i seconded henry seconded Perfect. i forgot you can't make the motion. <laughs>